Welcome to lecture 30 of uh, Power System Protection course. So, in the last lecture, that is lecture uh, number 29, we discussed regarding the, we are also continuing with the ADC. So, in the last class, we discussed about different types of ADC and little detail we discussed about the flash type ADC or parallel comparator type ADC where we, we have seen that though it is complex as the number of bits in the ADC increases, but still it is much more faster and it is really suitable for a real time application. So, <coughs> also we, <coughs> therefore we talked little detail and also we talked about the importance of uh, sampling and whole circuit, why it is needed in fact and then we talked about little bit Shannon's sampling theorem. So, we will continue uh, from that Shannon's sampling theorem. So, we discussed that Shannon's sampling theorem says that, it says that already we discussed this, if we have to sample the analog signal before feeding it to uh, the ADC. So now, uh, there are two frequencies in picture, one is signal frequency and sampling frequency. So, in real life we may have, we may never encounter a signal with a very well defined single frequency. So, every signal we process in real life is consisting of many, uh, many frequencies, right. So, therefore, we call it band of frequencies from lowest frequency to higher maximum frequency and that band is called the bandwidth and hence we talk about the signal bandwidth. So, thus the question that naturally arises is what should be the relationship between the signal bandwidth that is the maximum frequency contained in the signal and the sampling frequency. So, According to this theorem, this Shannon's sampling theorem, the minimum sampling frequency must be at least twice the maximum signal frequency, so that there is no loss of information. So, therefore, the sampling theorem states that the minimum sampling frequency should be equal to twice of the signal frequency, if it is a single frequency, undistorted single frequency. If your if it is consisting of, because in practice it is consisting of many different frequencies. So, therefore, the minimum sampling frequency will be twice of bandwidth. That is bandwidth is nothing but that is the maximum uh, signal frequency. That is the maximum frequency contained in the signal. <coughs> so, the minimum sampling frequency stipulated by Shannon's sampling theorem is known as the Nyquist sampling rate. So, we can therefore, in general write that if sampling should be greater than or equal to twice of bandwidth. So, already we discussed all these things that this is your forbidden sampling frequency till if sampling equal to twice of um, uh, maximum signal frequency, right. And this is your allowable sampling frequency range, right? Okay, so up to infinite it can be so, but it should have a finite value. So now let us see what happens if we violate the sampling theorem. So if we violate the sampling theorem and sample at a forbidden frequency that is given in the last slide at a frequency less than that stipulated by Shannon. So, what will happen then? So, we encounter the phenomenon of aliasing in such an eventuality wherein a higher frequency signal appears as a lower frequency at the output. So, this is called the aliasing. Aliasing means whatever signal we take at the input and after sampling whatever output again when we uh, recover the signal whatever signal we will get that will have the lower frequency as compared to the input signal. So, that is called aliasing. So, when aliasing takes place, aliasing takes place, we cannot recover correct information from the signal. So, this is what aliasing uh, takes place. 
So this is your input signal we can see here it is having much higher frequency and we are sampling this signal at a very low frequency that means it is less than the as, mm, less than the signal frequency or twice of the signal frequency. So therefore after sampling we got these points these are the points of sample points. So after getting these points of uh, sample value and after reconnecting this we get the output ok and that is how the frequency of the output uh, signal is, is, is much lesser than the original input signal as we can see here right therefore we call it aliased low frequency signal ok so these are the sampling instants given so now uh, we can see here the sample voltage we got here right so here uh, we are in fact sampling a signal frequency with 50 hertz and the sampling frequency is 49 hertz. So, we are getting a signal uh, with uh, with a frequency of 1 hertz only. So, it is very less right. <coughs> so that is what we sample at very low frequency as compared to the twice of the signal frequency we get we, we did not get the uh, actual information contained in the input signal ok. So, now let us see if we if you sample the signal exactly at twice of the signal frequency that is let us say the signal frequency is 50 hertz and the sample the sampling frequency is 100 then obviously if we will take the take the instant of starting of the starting instant of the sampling zero crushing then we will get obviously a straight line right. So, you can see a straight line at 0 and there is this is like a DC form DC wave form right it is even at the when we will take equal to uh, the twice of signal frequency that is the, the sampling frequency is equal to the twice of the signal frequency that also does not give proper information therefore, it should be greater than uh, so, similarly it is taken sampling frequency 49, 50. So, we got as I told in the previous slide. Now, if we will take the signal frequency 50 hertz and and the sampling frequency 500 hertz which is greater than the twice of signal frequency that is 100 hertz right much more greater. So, therefore, we will after reconnecting the sampled value we will get in fact the accurate waveform right what is mentioned what is shown here that is that gives us the 50 hertz signal again back <coughs> ok. So, therefore, this uh, Shannon's uh, principle or Shannon's theorem in fact very useful uh, to avoid the effect of anti-aliasing anti right ok. And in fact, because we know that our frequency uh, power frequency or power signals though the basic uh, frequency is 50 hertz, but still uh, it is basic signal is having 50 hertz is the basic base frequency, but still there are many uh, frequencies mixed with it many higher frequencies right. So, therefore, it is difficult to choose a, a, a sampling frequency in order to avoid difficult to choose in fact the sampling frequency in order to avoid this anti-aliasing effect. Therefore, what in fact is done in practice that we use the anti-aliasing filter. So, what is the function of this anti-aliasing filter? It in fact filters out the high frequency content that means, it, it is a kind of low pass filter it passes the uh, <coughs> low pass low frequency signals and high frequency signals are filtered out. So, there by that way we get the low frequency signal and very easily we can choose the uh, sampling frequency uh, in order to avoid the anti-aliasing effect. So, this is how your now your ADC block look like right. So, this is your ADC block in fact right and before ADC we have the sample and hold circuit and in fact before that we have the anti-aliasing filter which in fact kind of low pass filter which filters out the high frequency components from the signal right. 
So therefore, then it is passed through the ADC, then as usual the uh, conversion process is being done with the help of the DSP kit and the signal is fed to the DSP. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so, <coughs> this is how the complete uh, ADC looks like. It is consisting of anti-aliasing filter, sample and hold circuit and the final ADC which converts the sample signals to the digital, uh, it gives the digital output and it is fed to the DSP, right. Okay. Now, how the anti-aliasing filter works? If we see, this is a, this is an ideal characteristic of a low fuss anti-aliasing filter. You can see here. This is the, the gain of the anti-aliasing filter is 1 because it is an ideal low pass filter and suddenly it is uh, dropping at F sampling by 2 that means this is your cutoff frequency. So, your cutoff frequency for the anti-aliasing filter is F sampling by 2 that means your signal frequency that is consisting the, the, the signal uh, having frequency greater than F sampling by 2 must be uh, must be uh, must be removed from the signal or else it can be attenuated below the value of the magnitude of half lsp right or else the signal should be attenuated in such a way that above the f sampling by 2 frequency the signal magnitude should be less than half of lsp right that is also called Attenuate is attenuation, right? So, through attenuation process also we can achieve uh, this kind of filtering, right? So, that because this is the ideal low pass filter, so therefore the cutoff frequency is suddenly dropping uh, from magnitude 1 to 0, right? So, and if it is a practical, uh, practical ideal low, uh, sorry, sorry, practical low pass filter or practical low pass anti aliasing filter then your curve will look like this somehow, right? It will, it, is, it will have some rolling period, right? Rolling of period. So, that is how if some rolling of period is there, then how to choose the cutoff frequency? In the case of ideal filter, ideal low pass anti-aliasing filter, we can choose directly F sampling by 2 as the cutoff frequency. But in case of practical F case, practical filter, how we will choose? So, this is how this is the characteristic of uh, ideal low pass anti-aliasing filter, right? And this is the characteristic of practical low pass anti-aliasing filter. You can see here. Here, in fact, the cutoff frequency should be chosen in such a way that uh, when the rolling of period is passing through the F sampling by 2 point, right? At that point, your the magnitude output of the anti-aliasing filter should be less than half of LSP, right? Okay. So, that means when the rolling of period is crossing the F, the frequency F sampling by 2, at that point it should be, the magnitude should be less than half of LSP, okay? So, that should be the criteria. So, so this is uh, how it works and let us this is the cutoff frequency that is f sampling by 2 already i discussed that f sampling by 2 is your cutoff frequency for ideal low pass filter and your cutoff frequency for the practical uh, low pass uh, filter will be here somewhere in order to avoid the anti aliasing in order to remove the signal and also in order to attenuate the signal in such a way that above F sampling by 2 frequency, the magnitude should be less than half of LSP, right? Okay. So, this is how it works. Now, let us see the design of an anti-aliasing filter, how we can uh, design this anti-aliasing filter. So, let us design a Butterworth type, Butterworth type low pass anti-aliasing filter. Already you have studied this kind of low pass filter in your uh, DSP courses, right? <coughs> So, the gain of nth order low pass uh, Butterworth filter at any frequency, let us say if actual, that can be given by this. So, this is the gain of Butterworth uh, nth order uh, low pass filter. 
that is 1 by square root of 1 plus f actual by f cut off to the power 2 to the power n. n is the order of the uh, um, low pass filter, low pass but Roth's but Roth filter, right. So, uh, that when f actual is f equal to f cut off, the gain of the filter should be equal to 1 by 2. When we will make f actual equal to f cut off, then what will happen? It will become 1 by square square root, right. So, it will give 0 0.707. So, your gain at when f actual is f cut off is 0 0.707. So, let us design a Butterworth type uh, low pass anti aliasing filter for an n bit bipolar ADC. Okay, let us design for n bit bipolar ADC. So, the magnitude corresponding to half LSB is obviously it is equal to not equal to it should be a half of 2 V m by 2 to the power n it is nothing but V m by 2 to the power n and to satisfy the requirement that the signal magnitude should fall below half LSB beyond half of the sampling frequency, the following inequalities applies. That inequality is the output of the signal should be less than equal to the half of the LSB. This is your LSB 2 V m by 2 to the power n and half of LSB and this in fact gives us the magnitude of the output okay, that is V m by square root of 1 plus f sampling by 2 by f cut up to the power 2 to the power n. So, we are taking the f actual is f sampling by 2 right. So, now if we will see if we represent the ratio f sampling by 2 by f cut up because we know these values f sampling and f cut up then if let us represent this by alpha then what will happen then V m by 1 plus alpha to the power 2 to the power n square root less than equal to half of 2 V m by 2 to the power n. Now, after simplifying this this equation we will get n should be greater than equal to log of e natural logarithm of 4 to the power n minus 1 by 2 log log natural logarithm of alpha right log e alpha. So, therefore, we got the order of the filter Butterworth filter right. So, that is how we can design the low pass Butterworth filter for uh, that is called anti aliasing filter. So, now let us consider one numerical example. So, in this example so we need to decide the order of the low pass Butterworth filter uh, type that is anti aliasing type filter it is to be used in a DSP system with the following specifications. The specifications are number of bits in the ADC is equal to 12 and sampling frequency is 3000 hertz right and the cutoff frequency of the anti aliasing filter is 150 hertz. Okay. So, these are the specifications now we need to find out the order that is small n right. So, let us find. So, given is n equal to 12 that is the number of bits capital N and alpha if we will find out alpha is 1500 by 150 that is equal to 10 and from the equation it will directly substitute the values of alpha and n we will we'll get the small n value of small n that is in fact equal to 3.61 okay. and it should be it may be greater than 3.61. So, if it is rounded up we can round it up to 4. So, therefore, we can choose a fourth order low pass anti aliasing Butterworth filter that should be used for this given system for this given DSP system we can choose a fourth order low pass anti aliasing filter. So, this is how we design this uh, Butterworth filter right. Okay, now, we will see the functional uh, block diagram of uh, numerical relay. So, how uh, in fact the numerical relay operates. So, already we have seen that ADC plays very important role in in case of numerical relay 
analog to digital analog to digital converter and for this in fact in fact we have uh, uh, two signals important signals to be collected from the field that is voltage and current right okay so both voltage and current they are two important signals voltage and current so if we'll consider a three phase system like it is shown here right so phase a phase b and phase c right a b c so for three phase system if we'll consider these two signals so we need six cities to be connected right sorry three cities and three pts to be connected so three cities will give the phase currents i a i b i c and similarly three pts will give us the phase to neutral voltage vn vvn and vcn right now how we need to feed this if we'll have six a to d converter then obviously the cost increases right so instead of that what we can do is we can take six number of anti-aliasing filters six number of sample and hold circuit and we'll put the signal through an analog multiplexer to the adc this is your adc right so this multiplexer in fact chooses the signal right and in fact one by one it takes after uh, processing through the adc right through the because it's a multiplexer so now <coughs> I, I, B, I, C, V, N, V, V, N, V, C, N. These are six signals. So we are collecting these signals through this anti-aliasing filter and sample and hold circuit, and it is fed to the analog through the analog multiplexer to the ADC, right? Then ADC converts this and sends the digital output to the DSP, right? So, but somehow, if then what is the the, the because we know that we need some signal conditioning circuit because you know some surges are always present in the signal so in order to avoid these surges because these surges may hamper these electronic circuits like adc and all this it will hamper so therefore and also sometimes it gives the uh, bad bad uh, like after the sample and whole circuit it gives the bad sample right so therefore it is important to uh, condition these signals that means to remove these surges okay from the signal so therefore we use the surge protection and clamp clamping circuit so this surge protection and clamping cir circuit in fact it it uh, removes the surges from the signals and therefore so you can see here uh, we are using six for six signals, we are using six anti-aliasing filters, six sample and hold circuit, six surge and protection, surge protection and clamping circuit. Whereas only one ADC rate, it converts the signal and sends it to the DSP rate. Uh, so this is how DSP gives the trip output. <coughs> okay. Nowadays, relay has been modified a lot, and the numerical relays particularly because. The numerical relay is now imbibed with many functions and presently also it has been uh, integrated with PMUs. So PMUs are nothing but the phasor measurement unit, right? PMUs. So PMUs plays very important role in, in system parameter monitoring, right? So we can see here in this figure, this uh, you can see here, this is a numerical relay which is being which is being measuring the parameters in a synchronized manner right as we can see gps plays very important role right that is a geographical positioning system antennas so this this get, this takes the G G gps signal and in fact gps signal plays very important role in synchronization so we'll not go in, go into very detail of this uh, pmus right so in fact these PMUs are embedded with numerical relays nowadays, right? So the EPS receiver uh, sends the GPS signal here. Then here we give the analog input from the field. And we, ha we have here all the components, right? And some auxiliary input in order to activate uh, the, the numerical relay. Then 
we have serial ports here which can be connected to computer and also we have here the ports which can send data to the phasor data concentration from where in fact the data is being fed to the control centers data, data is being sent to the control centers for real time uh, uh, protection control and monitoring real time monitoring uh, control and protection ok then it gives the trip output then the auxiliary outputs in the form of uh, the phasers for monitoring right so this is how uh, your uh, and here we have LAN ports also right this is how it uh, it works and this is a little introduction to numerical relay and from next class onwards we will discuss more about the algorithms used to in fact extract the information from the signals from the sample signals so how uh, important informations can be uh, extracted that is very important so in from next class onwards we'll talk about that so thank you very much that will be lecture 31 thank you very much for your kind attention